And it's funny because it's, it's, it's getting huge, man. It's like massive. It's, I'll say about four years ago. Uh, you know, parents, parents wouldn't even think about one-on-one -on -one training because it's like th their mentality is, why do we need a private trainer when we, they can just get the coaching right. from their team? But now every time you coach, like in a group or whatever, there's always a dude next to you doing one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Everywhere you go. Yeah. All right, guys. So in today's interview, we have Coach Leo. Leo is the sales director here at Make Money Coaching Sports. And what we want to try to do today is we're going to ask you, Leo, a bunch of questions about the landscape of the private training industry in the UK. I know he's spoken to a lot of coaches already that live in the UK that are doing private training. And so Leo, let's just kind of get right into it. With your experience so far of talking to a lot of coaches that are doing private training or group training, what do you see are like maybe the top one or top two biggest problems that you notice with trainers that are specifically in the UK right now? Yeah. Hi, Ben. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, apart from talking to coaches, um, I'm also out on the field every week. So I come across a lot of private trainers that I'm either coaching alongside or I get into conversations when, when I'm going to and from uh, the field. Um, yeah, so the two main things that I see is number one, uh, trainers are very sporadic and they don't really have set, set days, set time that they do their training. It's kind of like, they have all their parents on a text message and that text message goes out maybe on a Sunday, Sunday evening. And they ask parents, Oh, are you free at this time? Are you free on that time? Etc. So the relationship between the trainer and the client isn't, I would say a very professional one. It's more like a personal relationship that, that they have. And the problem with that is that it's fine in the short term, but in the long term, if you're looking to grow and to scale a, a private training business, especially here in the UK, that model can break because parents get then get used to you being that way. And once parents get used to you being that way, it's very hard to change your, your mm -hmm. business model or your business system. So that's one thing. Coaches are very sporadic with, with how they, they train clients, with you know, the day they train, how they communicate, et cetera. Um, that's the first thing. So a lack of, I would say, organization is number one. And then the second one is most private trainers that are doing either like one-to-one -one or small group sessions, uh, they don't really have a proper business set up. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they they run it as more like a, a kind of like a side hustle where it's all done cash in hand um which again is is great but in the long term if you want to record like what's coming in what's going out um how your business is actually doing it's very hard to track and then also you run the risk of getting in trouble because obviously you're not declaring your your profits as income. Mm -hmm. So if you get caught, then the fine could be very big. So number one is lack of organization. And number two, I would say just, just no real business uh, system uh, set up in, with, within, within the tra uh, trainer's business. Right. So let's talk about the first thing. So I'm just trying to imagine it would be like the coach waking up on Sunday morning sending out a, a, a text or a mass text to all of the clients saying who wants to train this week. And then from there, the parents respond and they're saying, Hey, we want to train. And then, then they try to go back and forth on time location. And then that coach then will train the people who respond that week. Is that right? Mm, correct. That's right. Yeah. Um, what a lot of trainers are doing now is, well, it used to be all through WhatsApp, mm -hmm. but now, uh, now a lot of the communication is being done through Instagram, so direct messaging. Um, again, it's great, 
but I think it's just it's not it's not professional. Yep. In in the long term. So, but yeah, spot on. You right. Got it right. Yeah. One thing I've noticed, and something that we we see is like a lot of people will post on stories. They'll say like, "We have a booking tonight between five and six p.m. Who wants to come?" And then, like on the front end, it's it's good to promote yourself, but like you said, people get used to kind of just showing up whenever they want and paying whenever they want. And long-term that, that just breaks at scale. Like you can't have 50 clients you see every single week, set day, set time with that model. Um, and you know, like the coach that wakes up every Sunday that does that just on, just from your point of view, how much money do you think that they, that they lose per month on average? with that model a lot of pounds <laughs> um but well they lose it because it's, it's it's hard to track yeah right and that's something we do in in our program as obviously you you know very well uh, we we help coaches set up monthly subscriptions mm -hmm. so with a monthly subscription you know that every single month you're going to be generating x amount of money now, most coaches aren't operating that way. And, you know, you speak to a lot in the US. I speak to a lot here in the UK. And, you know, it's funny because the habits are very similar. Yeah. Um, but when you, when you run it very sporadically, you just, you, you don't know what's coming in each week, each month. And also going back to the, the communication with parents, when you're running it on a week to week basis, um, there's no commitment really from your from the client right. from their end because you know they can say yes to you on a, on a Sunday evening but then once it gets to maybe Wednesday evening or Thursday evening uh, they, they might text you the night before and say oh something's come up and then you were you know you had I don't know say on Sunday you got x amount of yeses you were predicting that out of those X amount of yeses, you were going to make X amount of pounds. And now that's just being cut. Boom. Mm -hmm. like that could be, a, that could have been cut half or, you know, you could have lost maybe a quarter of that income. Um, right. And it's because there's no system. There's no urgency. There's no commitment uh, from the client. Yeah. And it's on even a bigger scale when coaches try to do group training. Um, mm -hmm. I just got off a call with someone who, who struggles with this. And I know this is a big thing that you've told me about that's happening in the UK. Like, let's say someone has 10 kids that are supposed to be at a group session and all of the parents say that they're going to be there. And if that coach is getting paid by the session, if seven people decide last second not to show up, then you're only getting paid by three people and right. you're losing hundreds of dollars or pounds in this scenario when you do it that way, because like it is sporadic, people can kind of choose when they come. And then think about too, like, I know this is something you and I have talked about a lot, but like, let's talk about like the results side of, of the kids that are committed versus the kids who kind of just come in whenever, like, what do you think is the biggest difference with the parents of those kids who are like ultra committed, they follow through, they're there, Versus the ones who kind of just want to show up whenever, like, what do you see is like the difference maker with those types of parents, like the buyers? Yeah. Um, it's a great question. I think. In terms of like commitment, uh, the parents that are committed are the parents that are going to be there every single week. And ultimately as a business owner, you get to, to see the progress you're making with that client. Because mm -hmm. right? if they're coming come every single week, then, you know, unless, even if your sessions are really, really bad, they're, gonna, they're going to get better. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> they have to get better at right. something. It could be, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Even if you're the worst coach ever. Right. Now, if, you're, if your players are just showing up once every two weeks or once every three weeks then really and truly i think they one they don't really build a bond with you 
they don't really build a relationship with you. And then two, the, the progress you made in week one, that could all get lost when you see them again three weeks later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So having them coach train with you every single week just, just keeps them tuned, shall mm-hmm. we say. Mm-hmm. And you get a lot more better results on a weekly basis. Mm. Yeah, because... I mean, it's like this with anything. If, if you show up consistently, you're going to get better at that thing. If it's a every once in a while thing, there's, there's a lack of commitment from the player and the kid, but sometimes the kids can't help that if their parents are uncommitted. And, and so let's talk about something that I know this is a very difficult subject for a lot of people to talk about, uh, but just like the power of denying a client or, or saying no. Like, I know that's something that you, you do, right. You, you're not going to accept every single person that reaches out about training. Cause like you have your own commitments in place with, with how you run your business, but like, how difficult was that for you? I guess when you went through the process of identifying your perfect client and being more selective, like, was that an easy process for you or a hard process? Um, at the beginning it was. I think I was very open to accepting anyone just because same, same, same what we teach with a lot of coaches we work with. It's like, you have to get known by people. Right. But as you start getting that, that reputation, as you start expanding and getting more clients, then I think once you're at a, a steady number, then you have to start building a philosophy with your business. And that philosophy has to be based around like the, specific type of client you want to work with right so for for me at the beginning yeah I was accepting anyone but then it got to a point where I'm like okay if if anyone is coming into my business then at the at the end of the day who's the ones that are always staying the ones that always stay in the longest are usually the players that are maybe beginners um or maybe the players that are intermediate They, they they enjoy playing uh, they have a hunger to get better, but they just need, they, they want to be somewhere where they can enjoy themselves and develop. Mm-hmm. Then I was also training players were, which were a little bit more advanced. But what I started to notice, and this is something I see with a lot of trainers here in the UK, they all want to train these, these academy players. Top there's this kids. Obse- yeah, there's this obsession with training these, these, the best kids in the area. And the problem is that the top players are always looking for something else Mm -hmm. and they always get bored easily. So what I was noticing, yeah, great. It looks fantastic on Instagram because I can get a kid to do loads of little tricks and this and that. But essentially what's going to happen once they hit, I don't know, 30 days, 60 days, you're going to get a text message from that parent say, Oh, you know, we can't make it anymore. Why? Because that parent's looking for something else. Yep they're onto the next best thing or their child is too busy or their child is too busy exactly so for me i started to see right okay the type of clients that i wanted to work well that were staying in my program longer were like beginner players players Mm -hmm. that might be playing for the first time or they've got some experience but they just want to get better and ultimately like as you know uh, i've had clients that have been with me for three or four Three, almost going four years. And they were the ones that were beginners. Mm -hmm. And most of my clientele now in in my academy here in London uh, are that. Like, that's that's who I accept. Players that are beginning. um, As soon as we have the sales call and and I go through the questions with with parents, if I know that, right, this, this kid is playing at a specific club, then I know straight away this kid isn't going to be a good fit mm-hmm. because I, I know the type of parent, I know the type of player that plays in those clubs. Yep. And they aren't going to stick around. Right, right. How rewarding is that for you, knowing that those kids have been with you for three to four years? Um, when you sit down and, and you, you look at it, and you think to yourself, wow, like they've been with me for so long. 
Um, and then you start to think, do you know what? This is the progress they've made. Then, yeah, it's like, it's really rewarded. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it becomes, you know, you enjoy going to training. Mm-hmm. When, when, when I was at the, the, the beginning of my business, yes, I was enjoying it, but I had so many different personalities that training became a job. Mm-hmm. Because it was like, oh man, I have to train little little Johnny, or I have to train little Matthew, or. Right. Um, but I was doing it because obviously I was at the start of I was at the start phase, and I wanted to earn money, get players in, get known. But then once you do that, you have to remember. Do you know what? Now I have to make a commitment to these players. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Yeah. To to, to sum it up something I'm seeing with a lot of trainers here in the UK is that they're going for the fancy player. They're going for mm-hmm. that, that advanced player. And, you know, that, that's, that's why most of these coaches don't have really prop, proper businesses in place because mm-hmm. those types of clients, yes, it's fantastic and it's great to work with, but how many other trainers are they working with during the week? Yep. You yep. Know, you're, you're, pro- you're probably like one out of, three or four that they see every, every single week Mm -hmm. because parents are constantly looking, let's try him for a week or let's try him for a couple of weeks. Let's try. And really, can you, can you build a business with that type of clientele long-term? No. Right. Right. And talk about the difference between, so like, let's say the vast majority of, of a coach's clients are, are there for two or three months. Yeah. And then they're gone. They have to replace them. What's the difference between that and, and having clients that are just with you every single month for a year? Like talk, talk about like the finances and talk about like the mentality of running the business that way. So when you've got long-term clients, uh, let's just say you sleep a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because you're not constantly checking your phone yep. to see if a client has left your program mm-hmm. or if they've texted you to say, listen, we, we're not able to continue with you. When you're working with a client that's, that's not really committed, then ultimately it's like, it's just a matter of time before you receive that, that text message to say, we can't continue in your program. Mm-hmm. Or, or we're going somewhere else. So mm-hmm. when you get parents to commit long term, you your business just runs a lot more smoother. Uh, you don't get so stressed all the time. And ultimately, when you have longer committed clients, you're not constantly having to stress about finding new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you have when you have clients that are with you like short term. It's like, okay, you, you're good. You're good for a couple of months. And then after a couple of months, you've got to try and replace them. Mm. Yep. Um, so the difference, stress-free, long-term. Short-term is great, but ultimately you're going to have to keep recruiting for, for new, new players, or players. Right. Right. And I know I've spoken to coaches in the UK uh, over the last couple of years. And you've talked to a lot of people, uh, over the last year. And we see, we see messages from coaches that are like, yeah, I train, you know, between 50 and 150 clients. And cause we asked how many clients they're working with. And then when we dig down to it, like, then they tell us how many kids are training that week. Yes. And then it's, it's never 50 to 150. It's always like, 20 kids. And yeah. then what I always like to do is, is show coaches with a calculator, like, well, if you had 50 clients that are paying $200 or 200 pounds per month, you're making 10,000 pounds per month. Yeah. And so you could literally get rid of 100 clients and have 50 that are just really committed that are coming every week in a group yeah. setting. Right. Yeah. And I remember maybe six months ago, I posted something on Instagram and it was like, it was a question. It was a poll. It was about, could, could you make six figures per year with 
40 to 45 clients. And I think most people said no. And it would be physically impossible to do that if you're having to wake up on Sunday, text people and ask them to come pay you that week. Because like, like you know, I mean, Christmas, all of the major holidays or anytime someone goes out of town, they just won't physically pay you because they're not there. Yeah. And, and we've identified, you and me have identified, I mean, there's, there's so much lost income during the year if you run it that way. And especially like if you're paying for a field, if you're paying for space, like you end up losing money, especially in a group setting if not everyone is coming to that, that day session. Yeah. Right. So just kind of, if you had to just boil it down to one main tip, like let's say a, a coach in the UK is watching this and I'm, this is relevant towards coaches in the U S and any sport really too. But mm -hmm. what is, what is a change that let's say the coach they're, they're te texting on Sundays, they're, getting paid by the session. Like, what do you think is the main change that a coach should make if they're looking to streamline their business? Like, what do you, what do you consider as like the main thing they should do now? Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think, well, first of all, you have to have a plan, right? And I think mo most, of, most of these trainers that I see they don't really have a plan with their business. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I come across one kid on a Saturday morning. I talk to the parent. The parent wants extra training. Boom, they're with me for a couple of months, and then they're gone. And then in the process, I haven't taken any details from them. You know, I, I don't have anything to market to them. So right. I think the first thing is actually structuring, building an actual business plan and knowing where you want to go with that business for the next two to three, two, two to five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, obviously if you're doing it on a sp like sporadic basis, then you, you're not really going to go far. Mm -hmm. And I know, you, you know, you and me, we work with a lot of very successful coaches in our program and those successful coaches are not sporadic, right? right. They've got systems built in uh, they've got clients that have been with them for a long time. They know how to add value. Um, so number one, have a business plan. Second, um, I would say try and find a way to be different from everyone else. Uh, Instagram is a massive, well, you know, you and me, we research Instagram every single day. And mm. most coaches are all doing the same thing. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Training, drills, training, drills. So I think knowing how to add value, how to define, uh, be different to everyone else um, because ultimately when a parent you you have to educate parents on what value is mm -hmm. uh, because if you are just a trainer that provides training then that's great and you can you can say to the parent oh i provide high quality training okay fantastic but so does the other guy down the road right. so does the other guy yeah you know yeah. so it, you know, it, that, why do I need to stay with you? My child can get training somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So knowing how to add value, a business plan. And then also, as, as, we, as we talked about, it's just, you know, trying, trying to change your, your payment model. So trying to, to go from paying per session to actually how can we get your clients more committed so that they're, they're with you for at least three months. Mm -hmm. right yep um because also what you do is once parents start to to get used to staying committed for three months then that just, that starts to become the norm mm -hmm. and then it's, it's weird because when you educate a client then that when that client leaves you and goes to someone else they're going to expect the same kind of thing yep and then if they don't find that same kind of thing, it's like, right, okay, that they're like, that trainer's not for me. Yep. I need to find someone else that was similar to, to what my child was getting. So I think there's, there needs to be a bit more standards here in the UK. Mm -hmm. yeah. So business plan, payment system, and then knowing how to add value would be the three main things I would focus on. 
if mm-hmm. I was to start again with my with my business. Right. Yeah, and we'll do. I want to try to give an actionable tip here that mm. any coach that's watching could do. So, if someone's doing a pay by the session, let's say they they do specialize in one on one training, which I know that's common in the UK. Like everyone's a one on one trainer and a mindset trainer now. <laughs> uh, so, if someone's charging, let's just say it's. 50 pound per hour mm-hmm. for one-on-one training and let's say on average they see the client once per week so we take 50 times four weeks that's 200 pound per month yeah so if if a coach set that up where it's a three-month minimum then they can guarantee over three months they're going to generate 600 pound yeah. right so they could have that as an option or they could do it to where it's like you pay 550 up front save $50. So you pay five fifty dollars up front, you're getting a free session. Yeah. Um, and I think like that small tweak can make such a big difference in how people get paid and yeah. making sure that the client is committed during those 12 weeks. Cause when someone pays 550 pound up front, like if they don't end up showing up, that that's probably a bad sign to the coach because like they either don't like it or maybe just the client is just incredibly lazy doesn't want to doesn't care but people put more skin in the game the odds of them showing up are way higher yeah 100%, right yeah. And it's, it's better for the kid too so yeah. if we kind of take a if we take a step back let's say someone who's watching this and you know they've they've done it on the side they're they're doing everything the way that that you have described like the whole sunday wake up text everybody uh pay by the <laughs> session um what is like if that person's going to break through with their business and, and really make the changes that we're talking about, take it to the next level. Do you think it's more important that they just make business changes or do you think that they have to like really evaluate themselves as a business owner and make some changes first with how they just view mm-hmm. their business? Like, which, which do you think needs to happen first? Is it more of like, looking yourself in the mirror and saying, Hey, I need to change this. Or is it just like making, is it as simple enough as just making the business change? Yeah. I think, I think first of all, it depends on what you want, right? If you just want to do this as like a weekend thing, then that's, that's fine. Okay. However, if you want to do this full time and you want, you know, you want this to be your number one source of income um, and you want to scale it, then we have to reevaluate how we are getting paid by, by clients. So if I was starting again, then, or if there's a coach out there that wants to make that transition, the number one thing I would do, and, you know, it's a very simple one, is do what we, we just spoke about. So try and get a parent to commit for four weeks up front. Right, so... Get instead of charging per session, s- sell them on four weeks up front. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then once you see that, do you know what that actually works? And then once you start getting a little bit confident, the next client you can say, right, okay, now I'm going to see if I can get them to pay eight weeks up front. Mm. And then you continue. Once you start to get confident, then you go three months up front, four months, etc. Now, in the UK, I know why trainers don't do this. And it's simply a case because they are scared that if they do that, parents will say no and Mm. they'll just go somewhere else. Yep. Yep. So trainers are, they would rather make £50 that week than make zero. Yep. So that's where you have to evaluate yourself. Are you doing this to grow an actual proper business or are you doing this just as like a, a hobby? Yep. You know, because 50 pound a week isn't going to change your life. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, so that's what I would do. And if you want to do it seriously, which there are coaches in the UK that are doing it full time, you know, on, on our podcast, we've interviewed some coaches here in the UK that are do not, not only are they doing it full time, but they've got 
three or four full-time members of staff that, that are working for them. Mm. And a lot of coaches here in the UK think, oh, you can only do this in London because London's obviously the capital. It's where it's, shall we say, there's, there's more money in the country. But a lot of the coaches we've interviewed are based in other cities in the UK. Yep. So it can be done. Mm-hmm. But it depends on yourself. It depends on you and what you want to do. If you want to do it as a hobby, then that sporadic approach is fine. Yep. But if you want to do it professionally, if you want to do it full time, if you want to do it as a career, then we have to reevaluate and try and get your clients more committed. Because ultimately, that's, that's when you, where you're going to judge whether those clients are going to help to build your business or destroy your business. Right. And I also think about all of the people you've interviewed yeah. from the UK that we've had on our podcast, so some big names, right? Some yeah. people that are huge on Instagram, big businesses. The thing I've noticed when I watch those interviews is they have certain things in common. They have systems in place. Yeah. They have high standards mm-hmm. and they have a philosophy behind their business. So like, they're not going to accept everybody. They know who they want to work with. And they also have that set up for the coaches that work for them. They're yeah. not just hiring Joe Schmo off the corner to come and plan and run a session. It's like, there's, there's a different level of organization between those guys and people who aren't at that level. And that doesn't mean everyone has to get to that level, but you can have a really successful business by yourself, depending on the standards that you set. And uh, what would you, what would you say to someone who is like, they're right on the edge right now. They are, you know, they have clients. They know that they want to do better with their business. They have a lot of drive and ambition. They want to make the changes and Maybe like they're doing training and they have another job. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say they got on a Zoom call with you and they're, they're asking for advice. Like, you know, hey, well, you know, could I do this full time or should I do this full time? What would you tell that person? I'll say, well, I'd say, yes, you know, you can do it full time. Uh, depends on you. Yeah. Um, but you have to evaluate yourself as, as an individual. What, what, what do you want? And it goes back to my, my previous point is, do you want to do this as a hobby? Because if you want to do it as a hobby, then you're never going to get rid of your full-time job. Yep. If you want to do it as a professional, you know, a professional career, then we have to make changes. Um, and go, going back to some of the coaches we have interviewed, like something I've noticed as well with them is they have a solid... Uh, like clientele base so for example they'll have 50 to 100 solid clients that they see every single month that ha- that are on you know uh, monthly subscriptions and uh, they come once a week either in groups or, or or in a one-on-one setting and then on and then as an add-on they have those sporadic clients that that come for the odd session once a, once every three weeks or once once a month or whatever and what makes their business successful are those 50 to 100 clients yep. the ones that are committed um, and it's pretty much if i look at it now it's the same with my business i've got a handful of really committed clients that that pay me every single month and they make up for the ones that come once or twice every so often um, so if you want to do it full time, you have to build that clientele base where you're having committed clients, a certain amount that keeps your business going. And then you bring in those, those sporadic ones, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but right. if all your clients are sporadic, then you can't grow it. Right. Yep. Yeah. You can either choose to play with the little puppies or you, you play with the big dogs and, and you, and you end up doing what the big dogs do. And, and I see that I see that across the board with coaches that we work with. It's like when they when they make changes with their business, they're they're willing to make really big changes 
that make their business easier long term. And that's yes. that's the thing is I think some coaches, like you said, they're afraid to sell a higher end package to a parent because of rejection. And they'd rather get that 50 pound that week versus just trying to find and attract a committed client who's who's not going to pay 50 pounds. They, they might pay a, a thousand pound up front. Yeah. And that's what you know, we pretty much see that on a daily basis now with coaches in our in our program, um, where they can command higher, higher end uh, payments up front. So I'd like to add one more one more thing to that, Ben, as well. Is yeah. if let's like let's let's think about the club system, right? Whether that be in in the UK or whether that be in, in the US. So clubs are basically like you have the 18 players who will get all the attention, they'll get the best coaching, uh, they'll play in the best tournaments, they'll play in the best leagues against the best opposition. And what do the B, the C, the D, the E and F teams do? They just make up the numbers, Mm -hmm. right? So if you want in the A team, essentially you're not going to get that that high quality coaching, whichever club it is, right? But what clubs do is they sell you the idea that you've got to try and make your way up to that 18, okay? So a, a training business should have that same sort of model in that you've got a certain amount of committed clients that you're seeing every single month, every single week, and then the, the, uh, the rest is, is made up of the sporadic players. So in a club setting, the B, the C, the T, they just make up the other numbers. Essentially, they're, they're probably never going to get into the A team. The directors don't even know their name. <laughs> like parents don't get any attention from coaches okay. who play in the B, the C. They're just there to make up the numbers. Uh, and to fund the club mm. because yep. ultimately ultimately the eight the 18 players are the ones that make up that that age bracket mm-hmm. um, and out of that 18 that a team you probably have maybe four or five that are very good players who the directors will be always dribbling yeah. oh my god he's the best player blah, blah, blah. right right and, and yeah. that's what it is. And that's why these clubs have so, like hundreds and hundreds of kids because they just sell you that idea that your child is going to get better. They're going to get high quality coaching, you know, but unless, unless you're in that A team, All right. you, you don't get anything really. Right, right. Yeah, and this is something we, we have never talked about and I, I was going to make another youtube video on the channel about this but it's what i've seen this i think this is more relevant in in the states for basketball trainers but i'm seeing it has happened i've seen it multiple times actually probably hundreds of times trainers in the uk do this uh where what they'll do is they'll they'll get like a top player someone who's like either a pro or playing at a high level academy and they have like a big Instagram following and they'll like train someone for free to try to get more exposure. And then like, they're not really training that kid. It's, it's more of like this photo shoot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's like this photo shoot thing, like to, to make it look like they have someone who's huge and, and amazing, great technical player. Like it makes the video look cool. It, it gets likes and comments on Instagram, but like, do you think that's a good strategy for coaches to use to like train someone for free, get a lot of attention and try to turn that into more clients? Like, is that a good long-term strategy or is that a better short-term thing? Um, I think it definitely should be included, um, but it should never direct away from what your program actually stands for correct so you know your program should have a philosophy and it should have you know an outcome for the client when the client joins you what what are you looking to do now if 
you're taking the client on a journey where you're pushing them to become pro, which here in the UK, you know, there's, there's numerous now um, research of how, how the likelihood of any kids becoming professional is 0.001% actually mm -hmm. make it pro. And um, then bringing in a professional is good for that brand. Mm -hmm. So I think you should bring in people that represent what your brand represents. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's a good strategy, but essentially, you know, at the end of the day, you have to get on sales calls. You have to close parents on train, why they should train with you. So mm -hmm. you can bring in whoever you want, but if you aren't good at selling, if you aren't good at closing clients into your program, then essentially what you're not going to have clients who right. even, even if you bring in LeBron or Kobe. Right. Right. Yeah. You got Ronaldo out there. Like you still gotta, you still gotta, gotta sell. sell. You still gotta, I mean, sure. You can get a lot of eyeballs and attention. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of, uh, when you're talking, I was thinking about something. This is like on the negative side of it. So yeah. there was a coach that I spoke to in the States. Um, he's been a, a client of mine for a while. Uh, but this was like three summers ago. He was traveling like an hour, three times a week to train these kids that were like high level college uh, keepers, like goal goalkeepers. Yeah. And we were, I was on a call with this guy and I was like, well, you know, how, how far are you driving? How often are you doing this? And how many clients are you getting from this exposure that you're putting out? And he was like, well, you know, I haven't been able to measure how many clients I'm getting. And we realized like every week, you know, he's spending an hour driving there, doing an hour session, driving home. That's three hours, three times per week. It's nine hours per week of just time. And when we dialed in, you know, how many clients are you getting? Like we realized him spending all of that time for free because he wasn't getting paid by these people. Yeah. It was just not worth it. And, and he had to make that decision of just like, stop doing it, which I think for him was hard. Cause like he wanted to get more followers on social media, more clients from social media. But you know, when he's spending, you know, 36 hours a month trying to do something that's not really helping him grow his business. I let him know. I was like, well, now you have 36 hours per month to focus more on your local brand mm -hmm. and you're not doing these free sessions anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I spoke to someone else different sport uh, he was able to get a lot of people literally from, from like one photo like yeah. he had a photo with a pro people were like oh my gosh like you know this guy and like that helped him get people but at the end of the day he has a great program so he was able to get people to yeah. stay with him long term and, and that's the thing is just kind of recap what you said is like you know if, if you do this like big social media thing you you act like you're you know, Jose Mourinho, uh, and like, you're the best coach, like you can have all this stuff on social media, but like, if people are not committed, truly committed to your program, it does not matter. Yeah. Like, cause that's not going to keep the lights on in 10 years from now. It's going to give you a couple of good dinners or two months. But after that, you, yeah. you're adios. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Likes, man. likes don't, don't pay the bill that yes. Right. Likes, comments. Uh, I talked with a person uh, earlier this morning. Huge Instagram. Like, massive. Hasn't gotten a client from Instagram in the last two months. Yeah. And it's they spend a lot of time put, editing the videos, putting together a professional brand. And I'm like, that's not paying off. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, at least DM people, like do something uh, mm -hmm. to get some traction going. And, and, I, yeah. and I do see that as, a, as, a, as an issue for coaches in the UK. It's happened coaches all over the world. You know, they, they focus a lot of time on building this big social media brand when they should just be using a social media brand to build their business, yeah. build yeah, the exactly. dollars or pound. Um, cool, man. Any, any 
last piece of advice that you would give to someone who's watching this that hopefully has gained a lot of value like anything else you would tell them to get to get on a call with us <laughs> yeah and specifically you right so how, how do yeah. people sign up for that call with you so there's two ways uh the first way you can uh, email me so it's make money coaching sports at gmail.com mm -hmm. send me an email there uh, i'll respond to any coach that reaches out second way is uh, below this video, we're going to add a link and that link is going to direct you to a Calendly uh, calendar where you can schedule a call uh, with me where we get on a 15, 20 minute call. I just ask you a couple of questions, see where you are with your business and share with you some tips some strategies that we've, we've used with other coaches and, you know, we give you a strategy plan to take away. And if it works, then great. And if it does work and, you know, in the future, then maybe we can work together and we can take, take your business to the next level. But ultimately, those calls are simply just to, just to connect, to get to know you, get to know, you know, your business, what you're doing, and to hopefully solve any problems that you're facing. Because I know every single trainer out there has at least one problem that needs to be solved in their business. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, oh, <laughs> it, this way, this way, people don't just bombard you on getting on calls. Like, who is the call not for? That's a good question. Um, time wasters. <laughs> well, define that. What, what does that mean? So a time waster is for me, someone that schedules a call but then doesn't show up, right? So if you're going to schedule a call, then at least show up. You know, that's, that for me is the hardest part is the showing up. Anyone can schedule a call with either yourself or with myself, but you've got to then follow up and show up. So if you're a time waster, you're just someone that, you know, yeah, okay, you, you booked a, a call, but then when it comes to it, you don't get on the call right so just just show up that's the most important thing mm -hmm. show up be in a quiet space don't don't yeah. be in the car listening to music like mm -hmm. take it professionally because that's that could be for someone who's watching this that could be a difference maker in their business a 15 minute call with you could really open up their eyes with a, what's possible, B, the changes that they should make, C, they could be on a completely different path yeah. with their income in the next three to six months. And, yeah. and then let's say, you know, let's say you talk to someone and they follow through with some of the stuff that, that you advise them to do. And, and they're like, yeah, you know, I want to work with you guys on a deeper level. Like, just try to give like a 30 second to one minute breakdown of what they would experience if they do join the program that we have. So if they were to join the program, uh, accountability, uh, you know, we have different accountability systems in place in the program. Uh, like for example, the, the daily, cal uh, daily planner that yep. we encourage coaches to, to, to post their daily calendar or, you know, what they're doing that not just, that doesn't just help you as a coach, but it helps us to see like, okay, do you know what? This guy is actually following through or what is this guy doing? And um, so it gives us a lot of information, but it also gives you something to, to stay accountable with, right? Because if you're posting your planner every single day, you're going to do it. Yeah. Right. Even if you do one thing out of everything you wrote on that planner, right? It's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So you'll get accountability. Obviously you're, you're going to get support from us. You know, uh, we have a community in, in that program where you and myself, we're in there every single day answering questions. So you're going to get accountability. You're going to get support. And also, you know, something that I love is the, the coaching calls. So jumping on the coaching call, uh, asking questions, and also, you know, seeing what other coaches are doing. You know, because 
it's not every day you can sit down on either a Zoom call or just even a room of like-minded coaches that are doing the same thing. And I think that's what we do is very unique in that sense. You know, we're, we're getting coaches from different sports together into a community where they can share their experiences, talk about their struggles, and ultimately we can help them solve, solve their problem. Mm-hmm. So accountability, uh, support, Twitter, you know, every single day, daily support, and, and the live coaching calls, which I think are, are fantastic. Mm. Yeah, and I know you are extremely familiar with like the course material yeah. that we have. And like, I know we, we have a new, new module in there called the promotions. And like, I think you've seen how well some of the coaches who've gone through that, how well they've done the last 30, 60, 90 days. Yeah. Um, so what I want to try to do is give, give someone a sneak peek of, of what the promotions module is. So like try to explain pretty like quickly what, what that is and how it would help a coach that's in the UK. Yeah. So the promotions module is essentially it's like a a marketing module where we, we help you to create uh, like templates that you can use in uh, emails but also you can customize it and use it on on social media really as well for your posts and stuff. But ultimately what we do is we focus it more on the email marketing. Um, So we share templates and also we narrow down what you're offering because most coaches don't even know what they're, they're fantastic at training, but when they have to actually sum up their business, they've got no idea how to sum it up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's why they always just focus on on the training so when you ask them what does your company specialize in oh we you know we specialize in high quality training okay and and what else right um so what that module does is it helps you to narrow down what exactly you're offering to 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 parents to clients and how to create templates for for marketing and also how to the most important thing how to follow through so how to actually execute once you've created that 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 marketing material right and how to actually use it right like getting on the call knowing how to close people having a timeline of urgency so people buy in a certain amount of time um yeah that's in in my mind that's been a game changer for the coaches that we work with that have executed on that um i got an email from someone who he this guy never posts in the community, but uh, he sends me emails when good stuff happens to his business. And uh, like he generated more income in one month through running a simple promotion than he did in like four months of running his business. Yeah. So like that stuff works really, really well. And I'm eager to share that with coaches that are in the UK. Cause like, I know it's going to work. Um, no, it's going to work. So like you said, if, if someone wants to get in touch with you, they can either schedule a zoom call, show up to that call, talk to Leah, <clears throat> or they can just shoot you an, an email, make money coaching sports at Gmail. Um, cool. And, uh, anything else you want to say before we go? Yeah. Um, so, so what, one of the reasons I love what we do is because when we get on these coaching calls, sorry, these sales calls with, with coaches either in the UK or in the US, uh, it's sometimes it's, it's interesting because most coaches operate the same way. They all do the same thing. They all, do, they all, all operate their business the same way. And when you share with them different strategies, it opens people's eyes to think, do you know what? There is a different way of doing this. Mm-hmm. So essentially, that's what we look to do. We look to help you change those habits you have. Some people don't want to change, which is fine. But essentially, if you don't want to be helped, then we can't help you. Yeah. Um, But, you know, there is a system. There is a way of doing this. Um, we We have clients that we work with in our program that make outrageous amounts of money doing this. 
mm-hmm. um, and not just in the US. There's this thing with UK coaches that they're like, oh, that, that only happens in the US. But it, it, it's not, it's not at all. Right. Uh, you know, some of the coaches we've interviewed are making a lot of money in the UK. Mm-hmm. So it's that, you know, it doesn't just happen in the US. It can happen in the UK, but you need to have systems. And also, as a person, you need to change as well. Mm-hmm. Your mindset, your habits. So that's just one thing I love when, when we get on these sales calls and mm-hmm. we help coaches because it helps them to realize, you know what, there is someone out there that, that is teaching people how to do this properly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'll close with one thing. I think I told you this. I don't know, maybe four years ago. Yeah. Uh, But I went to a, it was a marketing conference here. It was in Las Vegas. This was like in 2011. This is a long time ago. And one of the keynote speakers, uh, he was talking about pricing and and what to charge and uh there was someone in the crowd that was from the uk and they came up and did like a hot seat with the guy who who was leading the the conference and he was like i just don't think i can charge this much in the uk and he he was like well hold on let me let me pull up someone on the screen and i won't say the guy's name but there there was a guy that was in the uk he was the most expensive personal trainer in the world with how much he charged per hour. And it was like ridiculous. And the, the guy who was on the hot seat that was asking the guy who was the keynote speaker, he just shut up because he was like, wow, that guy lives in my country. He's charging more than anyone on earth. <laughs> and, and I want to encourage, you know, any of the coaches that are watching this, it's like, it's not a, a regional based thing. It's like, you can charge a premium if you have a great product and you have a good sales process. Yeah. Um, and I know that has been an objection with some people who've talked to is like, oh yeah, I mean, that's gonna work in Texas or New York or California, but it's not gonna work here for me. But the reality is, I mean, at this point, we've already worked with people from Australia, the UK, all over Islands. Europe. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's more of a mindset shift than anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, we're excited to, to help more people out there. And, uh, great, man. Thank you for showing up to this interview. I think a lot of coaches will uh, really benefit from this. And coaches, if you're watching, get in touch with Leo, like go to the links in the description, get on a scheduled call with him and and take advantage of that. Let's start, let's start making money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ben. All right, you got it, man.